five major wounds to the narcissist. Remember, when you interact with the narcissist, there are three interactions that you have. The provision of pure fuel, challenge fuel and wounding. To understand more about those concepts, go to the Knowledge Vault and obtain the three interactions with the narcissist and finally understand wounding. These are important pieces of information with regard to ensuring that you understand narcissism. When it comes to wounding, you need to understand that the most important wounding to implement upon a narcissist, of course, is the imposition of a no-contact regime. You should never go out of your way to try to wound the narcissist because that means you may fail in trying to do it, resulting in the provision of fuel. You'll suffer an adverse consequence as a consequence of either the failure or the wounding. And thirdly, you'll be increasing your emotional thinking because you'll be taking steps to do something in relation to the narcissist thinking about the narcissism, potentially communicating with the narcissist in some form. All of those things drive you into an arena of interaction and result in increased emotional thinking. It is important for you to understand that this information is provided to you to enable you to look at what has happened in the past and therefore understand the impact that it has had. It's not a toolkit for you to go and start bandying it around so that you get yourself into further difficulties. Of course, if you wish to go and do that, be my guest on your head, be it. I really don't care, but I am here to provide you with the accurate and appropriate information and you as adults can make an informed decision what you do with it. With regard to wounding, it's important for you to understand that there isn't a baseline of wounding, that all wounding is the same. The narcissist can be wounded at different levels. There can be astronomical wounding caused to the narcissist, substantial wounding, major wounding, very significant wounding, minor wounding, very minor wounding, and so on and so forth. So there is a scale. And I have talked about this in an alternative video where I explain the extent of the wounding that you caused to the narcissist and in effect how that is arrived at. You'll find that very interesting to listen to if you haven't done so already. I'm going to provide you now with five examples of what I would categorize as major wounding. Do this to the narcissist and you punch a huge hole in the construct. You cause huge amounts of fuel to be used up to try and deal with this wound. And it is a major problem for the narcissist. It isn't one that is going to break the narcissist. It will cause fuel levels to plummet. It will cause the ignition of fury. And the narcissism will have to launch itself to come to the defense of the narcissist. But what it does do is at least enable you to understand that if you look back at past interactions that you've had with the narcissist, you can go, aha, that's why he or she did as he did or she did, because at that juncture, I caused major wounding. Substantial, wholesale wounding to the narcissist. Equate it to driving a sword through the gut of the narcissist. It's that troublesome. Number one, leaving the narcissist. This is where you end the formal relationship. I don't mean where you walk off and leave the narcissist sat at a table in a restaurant. That will, of course, wound, but it's not major wounding. If you leave the formal relationship, you cause major wounding to the narcissist because you are pulling out of the fuel matrix a huge amount of fuel, you are ripping out a substantial part of the prime aims, and you are damaging the narcissist's sense of control, not only by pulling those things out of the prime aims, but the very fact that you're escaping from the narcissist in itself. Therefore, leaving the formal relationship causes a major wound to the narcissist. Number two, failing to acknowledge the narcissist in a public gathering. 
So, for example, this might be where you're giving a speech and the narcissist is expected to be recognized or acknowledged for their contribution in achieving something and you forget to include them. Invariably, this would be done as a consequence of error rather than design. You are empaths after all. And in those circumstances, your failure to acknowledge the narcissist in a public gathering means that you cause major wounding. The narcissist anticipated the banquet of all of those people saying, well done you, clap on the back, round of applause, hip hip hooray. And they don't get it. Not only are they anticipating it coming because their sense of entitlement has driven them to understand that they are going to be included, recognised, acknowledged, praised, whatever it might be. The failure on your part to do that, not only you, your failure, but the fact that you are depriving them of the fuel and control over all of those people who are assembled. And therefore, a failure to acknowledge the narcissist in a public gathering, for instance, at work, where they've been left out of praise for a project, or perhaps forgetting to compliment them when it's their celebration, or perhaps at a celebration, forgetting to thank them for doing the catering, or in another situation, perhaps where they have been involved in coaching part of the team, that their contribution has not been included, then in such circumstances, that failure to acknowledge the narcissist in a public gathering causes major wounding. Number three, forgetting the narcissist's birthday. To the narcissist, our birthday equates with that of the birth of Christ. We are that important that we should be celebrated by many, many people around the world as having come to the world and brought something special. It's our day. And whilst you might say, well, doesn't the narcissist think that every day should be his birthday? And you wouldn't be wrong. The actual birthday becomes ultra special. All eyes should be on us. Gifts, presents, praise doing things for us, arranging things to happen. We expect all of those things to be elevated, held aloft, praised, admired, congratulated. All of those things ought to be done. The potential for getting it wrong is huge. You get the wrong card, you get the wrong gift, but I'm not talking about those things. This is where you forget the narcissist's birthday. Again, the narcissist has a substantial anticipation of a deluge of fuel from not only you, perhaps as the intimate partner primary source, but also from everybody else in terms of a gathering that would be organized for them. And if you forget to organize a special party, if you forget to organize something, a special breakfast for the narcissist, any of those things, but where you as the intimate partner primary source, forget the birthday. You are signalling to the narcissist they really don't matter on the most important day of the year. The narcissist's birthday is more important than Christmas Day, more important than Thanksgiving, more important than Easter Sunday. It is the day the universe truly resolves around me day. And in those circumstances, if you forget the narcissist's birthday, watch out. And there will be a huge ignition of fury because you've just caused major wounding. Number four, talking to somebody else and not the narcissist. Again, the narcissist's sense of entitlement is such that you should address them first, be talking to them. And if you have the audacity to be talking to somebody else in the narcissist's presence, that snub is not only depriving them of your fuel, but also the fuel from the other person or persons that are there. And therefore, you should be coming to the throne of the narcissist, paying fealty, rather than talking to other people. It doesn't matter that that is expected of you, that it is polite to talk to those other individuals. 
your failure to talk to the narcissist in those circumstances threatens the control, denies the fuel in a public circumstance, and thus causes major wounding to the narcissist. Finally, a fifth major wound, and there are more than these five, but I'm providing you five today so you don't get too greedy, is a failure on your part to turn up for something that the narcissist has planned. The narcissist is perhaps part of an amateur dramatics production. You don't go and watch. The narcissist has perhaps planned a celebration for your birthday, but you don't turn up. The narcissist has planned a romantic evening out for the two of you. You don't turn up. This causes major wounding to the narcissist. First of all, if the event that the narcissist has organised involves other people who are also expecting you to turn up, then you are essentially telling the narcissist you don't matter and then amplifying it 10, 20, 50 times by telling everybody else as well that we don't matter. And therefore that results in major wounding. There is also the fact that because we have gone to some effort with regard to the creation of a night out for us, a romantic setting, whatever it might be, cooking a meal for you that you don't arrive home on time for, or don't even turn up at all, the fact not only is it the fact that you have not turned up to be in the presence of the narcissist, but it is the fact that the narcissist has put themselves out and taken steps to do something for you, and you've not shown up. Not only are you signalling that the narcissist isn't important, you're also signalling that the honest and decent endeavours of the narcissist are not important either. And this results in major wounding. Five instances of major wounding. Notice that it's all about the absence of doing something. Leaving the relationship, no longer being in it. Failing to acknowledge the narcissist. Forgetting the narcissist's birthday. Not talking to the narcissist, but talking to other people. Failing to turn up for something the narcissist has organised or planned. Do that. You will ignite fury. You will not providing any fuel, and you will cause major wounding to the narcissist. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.